Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Story Darlings podcast. I'm Sandra. And I'm Tara. What are we talking about today, Tara? So we are talking about part two in the first Crescent City book. So Yay! House of Earth. Wait, it's right behind yeah. Sandra. Let me try and read it. Earth and blood. blood. I can't read that well, guys. It's, it's, it's hard being in a book podcast if I can't read, but that's okay. And we're coming off like that post-holiday crunch. So yes, life is fun. And I'm going to disclaimer this because I read this book traveling. So (laughs) I have no notes, none. So we're going to see how well I retain knowledge when I don't take my notes, my five pages of notes. I believe in you, Tara. So part one ended with Bryce and Hunt going to the river and meeting up with Hunt's contact, Theron, who is like captain of the Blue Court or something like that. And uh-huh. his little cute nickname for Bryce is as Legs. Legs. And, mm-hmm, we learn a little bit about um, Theron's background, like he had a little sister who was murdered and he's just kind of giving them the download of everything that he knows that's been happening. And so part two picks up with Hunt and Bryce coming back to the apartment, spending more time together, getting to know each other. Hunt gets a peek at Bryce's tattoo, and Bryce shares the Oracle story. I mean, she doesn't tell him everything about what happened with the Oracle. But I think it's in a further discussion with her about her father, too, and how after that, he just kind of threw her out. I think that that's what they were discussing. And she's like, yeah, I had a very bad Oracle experience. Um, traumatizing <laughs> in fact <very> bad. <laughs> yeah she's just kind of opening up and one of the my favorite things and it comes up again and I just love this but it's the when she was talking to Therian like a Hunt was getting a little jealous which was super funny to me like because Therian was calling her legs and like he he even made like a proposition to her and Hunt's like oh is that all you've got like basically <laughs> and, and I thought that was funny, but then like she she talked about like what brought her to the city in the first place. And it was the little otters that like she saw them and like they deliver like packages for like Therian's court or whatever. And she's like, I just wanted some time in my life to get one of those. And I feel like that's me. Yes, that is totally you. <laughs> I would totally like move cities to be able to like get a little otter friend um (laughs) on my vacation I even like went up to these little like squirrels that were in like Washington DC and I'm like I'm friend shaped come here I'm friend shaped and they did come to me and then Carly and Michael came over because they're like I want to play with the squirrel and then Michael scared the squirrel off but still like the boys were like Mm -hmm. coming up to to me and I'm like oh so yes I feel like that would be me Tara Palazzola, squirrel whisperer and otter messenger enthusiast. Yes, you would definitely yes. move to Crescent City to get some otter mail. <laughs> yes. And Therian even said, oh, I'll, I'll make sure you get one. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, yes. And like, he fulfilled that promise, too, later, did. as we will see. He is a good boy. At that point, there has been some growth with Hunt and Bryce's relationship. And so he wasn't jealous. I thought that that was so sweet that he was just, like, watching her face light up and, like, the joy that she got out of getting this otter mail. And, like, he didn't even care that Therian was the one who brought her the joy, but just that the joy was there. And I loved that for Hunt. That's one of my favorite aspects of the relationship between Hunt and Bryce is that he, just the growth that they share together, I mean, he does a complete 180 in how he feels about Bryce because he was there at her lowest low when her best friend, soon-to-be guy that she was dating, all of the people that she loved and was you know, close friends with got murdered. She was like high on drugs, had this party girl reputation. I mean, he was there for all of that believed the rumors himself and then two years later he sees how empty she is inside and how depressed she is and what a shell of a person she is and for him to just like change how he thinks about her 
because he knows that Bryce has just been pretending to be this person that everyone wants to believe that she is and not defending herself. So he sees that in her and for him to appreciate other people giving her that kind of joy, even though they are, you know, kind of a rival or competition romantically, it just says so much about him. I really like that kind of adult relationship between the two of them. And I think he's catching on that there's a reason she's hiding that and not just that she's hiding it because she wants to let everybody else believe that. Mm -hmm. And we do find out at the end that he didn't know the full extent of that. But I think he's catching on that there is something behind it. Yeah. She's not just doing that because she wants to like let everybody else believe that. It's that there is a altruistic reason mm-hmm. behind it. Yes. I mean, we can go ahead and talk about some of it now because it all it all is just kind of intermingled, right? All of this growth stuff mm-hmm. is happening in parallel to them doing this investigation into Danica's past and what happened that night. And so we find out more about Bryce, like her after all this shit with the pack of wolves happened and the Cristalos demon back then, that she was bullied so cruelly. Um, Mm -hmm. That song being written about her, like she developed, Danica was like a celebrity in Crescent City and Bryce was her best friend. And so Bryce was just, you know. So after Danica died, all their text messages were released. And the one that everybody like hung on to was um, the one that she had sent Danica right before she went home, which is, I just hooked up with this guy in the bathroom. Don't tell Connor. Which is also the reason that Ethan is pissed. Um, Because he's like, while my brother was getting massacred, you were sleeping around. Like, after he had basically just told you that he loved you. And so Ethan is, like, holding this grudge to no end. Mm -hmm. All because her private messages were released. Like, it was mentioned in there that it was like she was owned by Connor once he told her that he loved her like they were like mates or whatever and the wolf pack and Ethan and everybody else thought of her as his property even though she mm-hmm. didn't like agree to being his property she like somewhat agreed to a date yeah to see where casually but but now she's his property and like she is being blamed for living her life it's classic slut shaming yeah, because she was supposed to act a certain way because she somewhat agreed to try things with Connor. And, like, that part pissed me off. I'm like, yeah, you don't own her. She doesn't owe you anything. Like, there's been no talks of exclusivity. She said she might be open to trying. That's it. But everybody is holding her to this preconceived notion of what she should have done once she agreed to try with Connor and making up songs and even Emily or um, Amelia, Amelie, 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 whatever her name is, as she, she is like on my list every year, Bryce has got the like croissants, the like chocolate croissants that Danica used to love getting on her birthday and went and like, had her moment with Danica on Danica's birthday, right? And this year, she wrote trash on them. Amelie did. And that's what, like, they have been calling Bryce since this happened. And you just see how much the pack that was supposed to be her friends, was supposed to care about her, like, turned. All because of the stupid little text about, don't tell Connor. And their notion that she belonged to him. And then also Amelie, like, is pissed because Connor chose Bryce over her. And it just makes you, like, feel so bad for Bryce. And she's just taking it. She's not retaliating. She's not trying to clear her name. She's not doing anything. She's just letting them destroy her piece by piece. You feel bad for her. Or at least I did. And if you do, oh. I don't know if you have a heart. <laughs> like, are you human? Yeah. I mean, to be at a level just... Being in that kind of spotlight, being best friends with Danica, and then feeling like this pack of devils and even just the greater werewolf, the shifters yourself are a part of your greater family, and then it just not being the case. It's just, it's so overwhelming for Bryce. And it's not even just that loss that gets to her. It's her whole little friendship group, like, Mm -hmm. breaks up in a way, because Danica was kind of the glue that held them all together, 
And then you just kind of have Fury just being MIA, not talking to her ever in the group chat. And then there's Juniper too. And then even Juniper's friendship kind of changes with Bryce Change. because Juniper has to be kind of on high alert in a way because Bryce is in such a deep, dark place. And, and you know, Bryce doesn't want to be even more of a burden, you know, so it just makes her distance to herself more. And you also have like Sabine, who is Danica's mom, who <sighs> they went to visit during their investigation and they accused her of being the person that killed Danica because she's the one who changed the audio. Right. Mm -hmm. And Sabine is still so mad at Bryce for, in her words, bringing out the worst in her daughter and for being a half breed, basically like she wasn't worthy of her daughter. And so you also have that, that, you know, your best friends with Danica, who is like this celebrity. And it had she even just been a full blood, like that would be bad enough. But she's also this half blood that everybody looks down upon anyway. And so compared to Danica, like Danica's way up here and Bryce is like way down here. And you have even more of a like imbalance to how everybody's going to look at Bryce after the fact, because they already looked down on her, even when Danica was around. Danica being around just kind of scared everybody else into shutting their mouth about it. You know, it was more mm -hmm. of like everyone just saying the rumors behind their back, but it was still going on. But there is, I was so happy when Hunt came to Bryce's defense because after he found out about this trash being written across the chocolate croissants, he goes to the Black Roses headquarters essentially and confronts Amelie and freaking chokes her out against a wall pretty much and ethan is there and which is such a weird reunion for bryce like you're in P bryce's perspective and she's just having like this meltdown internally like mm -hmm. oh i can't do this i can't do this i'm gonna puke i'm gonna throw up like because her and ethan used to be so close like he was like a little brother to her and like they just used to crack jokes and text and call each other all the time. She'd go to his sunball games. And now he just looks at her with disgust and hatred. And so it's such an overwhelming moment. But Hunt comes to Bryce's defense, knowing that he will be punished by the severely. governor of the city. Yes, very severely, as we will see. And like still does that. And that just speaks so much to Hunt, like who he is. And we already know he's a very principled person, especially joining this rebellion and doing all of the things that he did that went along with that and what he lost. So that's nothing new for him, but he's just that strength that Bryce needs. And that obviously gets Bryce to open up to him. And she talks about the night that she thought about ending her life and just walking over this, you know, the edge of the roof and just putting an end to it. And like that part made me cry. Like I was so emotional. Well, did she actually tell him about that night? Because like <sighs> when the final events happen and she calls him, or maybe it was Rune that didn't know that it had gotten that bad. Rune didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Because I was like, somebody didn't know. And they're like, it gutted them that it had gotten that bad. She did end up opening to hunt about it because of him sticking his neck out for that. I don't know if it was after he got his wings chopped off as... You know, which was horrible. Which was the punishment. So Sabine, <sighs> being Sabine, wanted to punish Bryce and chose Hunt to do that. Basically chose to give Bryce one more thing to feel bad about, which is that she demanded Hunt be killed. And Micah said no to that. He's like, no, I'm not going to do that. But I will kill him in a different way, which was to cut off his wings. Mm -hmm. And so he cut off his wings while Bryce begged not to do that. And so then, yeah, we get him recuperating and her like taking him into the shower or no, she, that was after he was forced to kill somebody else. Right. Yeah. The drug Lords. Uh, Micah from all this time is saying, you're going to owe back all these lives that you took in the war. And so you're going to go out there and kill all these bad people, drug dealers and mm -hmm. shit in my city. But everything he starts doing to Hunt is almost like payback or revenge, you know, for yeah. Hunt undermining his authority, you know, is yeah. how he sees it. I forgot what Hunt did in that situation. Oh, he wasn't working fast enough. Right? Yeah, and it was the, like, the Sabine thing pissed him off too. 
Yeah, he had like they accused Sabine of being the murderer or whatever. Without and evidence. So that was Hunt's punishment for that is he had to go kill these drug lords that we, we find out that they were drug lords later, right? And um, so he does it and he comes home and it's like another little piece of his soul has like died. And he gets in the shower and Bryce comes in with him and like starts cleaning him. And like she had noticed that he had the water so hot that like his skin was being burnt off. But because he's an angel, like it's healing. Right. But mm-hmm. it just keeps being reburnt off and reburnt off and reburnt off. And so she like turned it down so she didn't scald herself um, and starts washing him and like puts him in bed and like takes care of him. And he notices that. And he like, I think that's the point that he even opens up a little bit later about like the last time he had that was with his mom. And he opened up about his mom and like how she died and like that she was a, a maid for these higher up angels. And because he was a bastard born, like, he didn't have his father in his life. She was looked down upon. And like, I think she got sick or something. And nobody gave a crap that she died. And um, that really like told him something about how they felt about him. And that Sahar, or Shahar, was the first person to like, not look at him like he's less than because he was a bastard born. And so that's where his love for her started. And so he's opening up about all this stuff. And then Bryce opens up about her own like struggles and like feeling like less than when her dad decided she wasn't worthy. It's after this night that Bryce helps hunt in the shower and get him to bed and it's like taking you know, care of him. It was a very motherly scene, the way she nurtured him with his head in her lap and that kind of thing. She ends up sneaking out of the house and going to the night garden just because she's like in her thoughts and feelings and stuff. And she gets attacked by a Cristalos demon. And luckily Hunt finds her, but he does get injured from this. Mm -hmm. And this is a point where Micah turns up at the garden and He already was exhibiting very sketchy behavior in just how he treated Hunt and some of the things that he says to him. But Mike ends up burning the body of the Cristalos demon, which is just like, uh, okay. So that was like one of the first firm times you're just like very suspicious of him. Well, especially because they were trying to use that Cristalis to then find out information. And this is what Micah has said the whole time that he's after is finding out this information, yet he's burning the body that could give them more information on Mm -hmm. who's bringing it to the world, right? Mm -hmm. And so you get this, like, he's saying he's after one thing, but he is actively, like, making that harder. Yes. And he's making everything seem like it's about the summit, like trying to get this all bowed up and completed before the summit and the stary and all of this, because the sub- summit happens every 10 years. It's a big deal. All the who's who's of the entire world is at this convention. And so it's just a lot of things that he's saying aren't adding up. And then, you know, Hunt and Bryce leave and we get a little scene with a medwitch that keeps appearing in the book a very educated, beautiful medwitch. Who Ruin is is filling. Yes. Like, mm, yes. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'll help you. Ruin has been this way even after being betrothed to, you know, the witch. Uh-huh. So I don't think he's actively betrothed. Like, I think his dad told him that he should get betrothed. And Ruin's like, mm, no, no, we're good. And his dad, like, you know, well, shit's about to happen and the Fae are losing our powers and, like, we need allies, so, like, you're going to. But Ruin, I think, is still, like, uh, am I? Like, I think he's still pushing. Like, so I don't think it's, like, official and I also don't think that because we we meet this lady later on and she's like, no, it's not official. Like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I still get to make my own decisions, right? And so I don't think it's official. To his, like, defense, like, he's feeling this other chick, and he's not officially betrothed, okay? He's not... <laughs> I He's not breaking I just, rules. I like Rune because he's just such an apathetic leader. Like, he refuses to 
assimilate to courtly behavior and expectations and just continues being like the head of their auxiliary, but just, you know, partying and sleeping with whoever he wants, just being friends with, you know, Declan and Flynn and their frat house equivalent, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and he feels so bad for how things ended with Bryce. Mm -hmm. Like, you get more of the stories of him when they were younger and how much he loved that he had a little sister. And, like, his oracle vision did not go well either. And he was basically told that he would be the last of the royal line, right? And he took that to mean, if my sister is accepted as a royal she will die and so like you see both of them trying to protect each other so hard without telling each other that it just like goes against each other and like Bryce feels like he doesn't think of her because he doesn't want her to be acknowledged as his sister and mm -hmm. he's doing that because he doesn't want his sister to die. He loves her and he doesn't want his dad to like hate her. And she's mm -hmm. telling him to watch out for his dad because he kills like starborn, you know, like the starborns die and like their dad doesn't like him and blah, blah, blah. And so they're trying to both protect each other the only ways they know how, but end up hurting each other to do that. Like knowing that backstory makes you feel for him because he's only doing what he thinks is best for he's getting punished for it yeah i mean that backstory just further seals why bryce is so against like the whole alpha whole thing especially with her father and how he treated the mom it's just another thing that supports that thinking right and even after this whole oracle oracle debacle and rune treating her like trash basically when she was 13 mm -hmm. Ember gets fucking pissed off and is just like, see, this is why I wanted you guys to have nothing to do with Bryce because I wanted to protect her from being treated like she is less than and in some way inferior to you guys. And what did you think about the king's like, like he <laughs> implies heavily that he was in love with Ember. And he does. He would have made her his queen. And like, I don't know that I believe him. I think he is keeping secrets. I think he knows stuff about Bryce and or Ember. I think he loves power and knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And I think he loves the things that will earn him the, more of that. And so I think he honestly believes that, but whether it's objectively well, true. he already has a wife. I know. I'm like, like right? what were you going to do? Like, kill her off? Mother. and. <laughs> like, I don't know that, like, you would be willing to make that sacrifice. Like, not that he loves his wife. But no, like, she's a doormat. Like, yeah. Like, how would he, like, get rid of her where he still comes out looking good? Yeah, right? how would he like, get rid of her? Her relatives are, are pretty high up, right? Mm hmm Like, how would he get rid of her to then marry this half-human or like this full human and still come out looking good. That's where I'm like, I don't think he actually would have done that. Yeah. Every action that he's had up until this point proves otherwise. It doesn't align with yeah. what he says. And But it does make a lot of sense. Like you said, he loves power because when she took like the little test Bryce did, she had no power, which also <laughs> made it very easy for him to be like, me, like go away. He's ashamed. Like, you're not worth it to me. He thinks it's yeah. a, a reflection, a black mark against him and his power. So that's why he's just discarded her like garbage. Yeah. But because she was barely a blip on the chart or whatever, which mm -hmm. interesting. So then like we continue with this investigation and Hunt mm -hmm. is like severely hurt because it takes like weeks to grow back these wings. And he does something else to piss Micah off, doesn't he? Because that's how he gets sold. What else did he do to piss Micah off? To get sold off, him, Justinian, and Victoria, oh, he got yes. caught. He was trying to back out of his original plan, which was to yeah. betray Bryce, which it's like, God damn it. <laughs> so Therian, like, unknowingly tells Bryce, like, hey, shit's going down. Synth drug deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before that, we find out that there is this drug that is being released onto the like world. And we find this out because Bryce puts it together that Danica left her something in her coat, mm -hmm. right? And it's like this little flash drive. And on the flash drive, there are videos of humans being injected with this drug. 
and it giving them powers. And then they go insane and kill themselves, right? And so the powers were tested by putting in like veneers and letting the human kill them, like prisoners, which I also thought was like incredibly crazy. Like even though they're prisoners, they still like, sent them into their death knowing that that is the only thing that they were going to get out of that is see them die. So like these humans are killing like people with powers, right? So they're trying to track this drug. And then the little med witch comes in. She's like, I think that the venom from these crystallis demons is what is or can stop magical powers, right? And we saw this in Bryce a little bit. And we also saw this in Hunt because he couldn't use his lightning Mm -hmm. after that Crystallis attacked Hunt and Bryce, right? And so this medwitch is like, hey, I think we can use this venom to counteract the synth. And she was the first one that brought the synth to everybody's attention because she told Ruin that there's a drug coming on the market that I've heard does this. And then we, we see it some more with Danica's little videos. And then... Therian also confirms that there was a drug deal right before Danica died and Danica was on the boat. And so we're getting a sense that Danica was um, deep in some shit that she had never told Bryce about. And everybody is hinting at that Danica was the one selling this. And doing it. And doing it. And that is how the pack of devils died is Danica taking it and overdosing and basically killing the whole pack and then killing herself. And that's the reason on the audio, we only hear her begging for her life and not anything else, not like what was killing them, not anything else, right? And so Bryce has been told by Therian that there's another drug deal going down and he takes her to the boat. And we see Victoria, Justinian, and Hunt. And the Viper Queen. And the Viper Queen making this drug deal. The Viper Queen is giving the drugs to the three angels. And Bryce is beside herself because she feels like Hunt just chose like his long lost love. And this is after they got some spiciness. Like they he was injured with some spiciness <laughs> um, from his injury, right? And yeah. they left blood marks on her couch because of his injuries. Like they opened his injuries up with their spiciness, right? And so <laughs> she is feeling very betrayed because she feels like even after that and even after all of the opening up they did to each other, that he chose Shahar over her. Shahar and their rebellion over her. Because what they were going to do with the synth is give it to the humans and let them have like even more of a chance of beating the angels in this rebellion. And so she throws the little joy stone that they got back at him and like, just tells him he's on his own. Like she doesn't want to deal with him, like whatever. And Micah shows up and that's how we find out that the Viper queen has been in cahoots with Micah this whole time, trying to trap the three angels. Yeah. Or, well, two angels and the wraith. The whole scene is horrible because Hunt and Bryce have been making so much progress in how their relationship is developing. And then Hunt has the gall to be flaming these lies that Danica was a synth user and dealer and she's the one responsible for these deaths to the point where Bryce's whole like core of her being was questioned and she was doubting everything and feeling lost again and kind of going down that spiral. And he just like (laughs) lets her go down that road. So when Hunt picks the rebellion again, like that's the final blow for Bryce. And she becomes like pulls back and becomes that distant person again. But then we find out like she wants nothing to do with Hunt at this point. But then she hears, I think, from Lihaba, right? Because Lihaba is like tuned in watching the news and stuff. And so she hears that Hunt is going to be punished by Micah, along Being with sold. Justinian, mm-hmm, sold back to Sandriel, Shahar's twin sister. And Sandriel, we all know, is just evil and cruel and going to never free him. And who knows what she'll make him do. So we see that Justinian and Victoria have already been punished, right? Like horribly and was crucified and let to bleed to death. And Victoria was like pulled out of her body 
and put in this little box and like put under Justinian to like have his like blood just be like I envision this like the noise like you know if you're trying to sleep and like there's like just a little drip coming out of your water faucet and how annoying that is but to then like know that that's your friend's blood yeah and like his life is like ending at that time and stuff so yeah it was just horrible what they got and Hunt was even more right yes and so she knew Micah was gonna punish him like the worst and so our girl tries to find a way to keep him out of as much danger as she can. She, I think she first begs Micah, right? And Micah's yes. like, there's nothing I can do. And then um, after he was sold to Sandriel, she goes and she does the two things that are allowed to be done. She asks to buy him and she offers more than what he was sold for in the first place. And everybody's like, how the fuck? fuck did she get 97 million Mm -hmm. and hunt knows how she got the money and it was basically selling herself to jezebel Jezebel. Mm -hmm. for even longer and when sandriel's like no she offers herself in his place and i think like sandriel being the cruel person she was was weighing like can i hurt hunt more by having him Mm -hmm. in my possession or can i hurt him more by having her in my possession. Mm -hmm. And so she like took a minute to weigh that and then tells her no. Yeah. Bryce even offered her the $3 million amulet that she's always wearing. Mm -hmm. And at that point she like crushes it and throws it. And she's like, I think this is the point where she's like, did you not think that I knew who you were? Yeah. And Hunt's like, what are you talking about? Like, who is she? And like she lets Bless it out that <laughs> she lets it out that she is the only daughter of the Autumn King. And Rune's like, uh oh. <laughs> and Hunt's like, what? Oh, it makes sense now because like Rune has been at her beck and call. Like this makes sense. <laughs> like, like you dumb dude. Okay, <laughs> like, but that's okay. Like, sweet little. You- like, at least you're cute, right? Yeah, at um, least you are got that going for you. <laughs> um, but so, like, she did all these things, and Hunt is back under Sandriel's control. And Bryce goes back to the, like, antique store, right? And she is faced with Micah at that point at the antique store. Because Micah has put two and two together, that Danica did hide the horn where it would be the safest. And that is in the tattoo on Bryce's back. And the the person that can use this is a star-born individual, right? Mm -hmm. And Danica knew all of Bryce's secrets, and she knew that Bryce would be the one to be able to be, like, use use this, right? Um, However, Micah has not picked up on that little tidbit of information and so he uses his power to activate the horn the whole time it wasn't really his power activating it it was Bryce's but still we see him just being like cruel and I don't even want to talk about the scene so Sandra you have to talk about the scene like I don't want to Micah puts it all together because once Sandriel destroyed like melted that amulet that has been protecting Bryce all this time it the amulet was the amulet was basically ask, acting like a mask for like Bryce, like her essence or whatever you want to call it, it has been masking her. But as soon as it's melted, it's like a red flag for whatever Crystal's demon or whatever is hunting her to find her. So it's right after that scene where she tries to buy Hunt that she is attacked again. And Rune and his little posse, Declan and Flynn, help out and, you know, get her out of there. And so the summit is taking place by this point, And all the who's who are there. The Asteri with their leader, what is his name? Rigolus or something like that. Jessiba is there, which we have to talk but more about he's Jessiba. Not there. Oh, he's like, like video. The he's, there. They're video yeah. conferenced in. And, and Sandriel is, is there. Like um emissary. I, yes. And there's, I mean, the Autumn King, all of the Fae, all of the shifters, but like Jessiba's background is very interesting. And the queen of the witches is there, who <laughs> happens to be the med witch. So 
I find this hilarious because Ruben is putting it together that like his dad wanted him to be married to the queen of the witches, right? Like that mm-hmm. was the betrothal that was like in the works. And he started falling for the med witch and they're one and the same. <laughs> so he's like, oh, that wouldn't be too bad. Like that, that's fine. Let's, let's do it. Hypaxia, right? That's her name. Mm-hmm. Hypaxia. And she like, she's such a lovable character. Like she's so smart. She's into like the science and the spiritual and is so like just, she's did brilliant. Did she remind you of Irene? She did remind. In fact, the whole part with her surgically, surgically removing the venom from Bryce's thigh, which has been masking other powers of Bryce's was exactly like Irene and Kale, just like getting in yes. there and just stripping it out. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. yeah, it was just like that. But uh, Hypaxia is amazing. And I think it's, um, it's even cute how the witches in this book, like hop on their little broomstick <laughs> and like fly away is, it's very much, I think we've talked about this before. It's very much like in, what is it? Throne of Glass. Like the good witches, not the not the iron teeth, but um, the other ones. The little red coat or red mm-hmm. cloaks. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. And she asks Hunt a very specific question about if you were to have your crown removed, which is the thing that's holding him basically hostage, and it was put there by a witch, if you were to have that removed, what would you do? And during that scene, I'm like, oh, she can remove it. Uh Oh, uh she knows she can remove it. She's just testing him. Like, if I do this, what are you going to do? Like, I feel like you're worthy of me removing this. But are you? And that was right after she had removed the venom from Bryce and she saw their connection. And I think she also knows what Bryce is. Like, I think she has also picked up on that, which we will find out later. But I think she has picked up on it. And she's like, Bryce is worthy are you like Mm -hmm. Bryce has deemed you worthy, but I need to know that you're worthy of Bryce and also of me removing this. And so she asks him, I'm like, Ooh, I like you. You're so smart. And like, like caring about other people. Mm -hmm. Like you can tell she's not just about the witches. She's about everybody. Yeah. I think I remember she's just so damn perceptive. I think, in the mm-hmm. beginning, I was very unsure, especially the first time I read it, because she kept popping up at the crime scene. I'm like, okay, what is this? What is your end game here? Are you trying to find the horn yourself? But the fact that she helps Bryce like that and the way that she asked Hunt that question, it was like, oh, she is one of the good ones. She is totally on the rebel side or would be if given the choice. Well, and I was suspicious of the queen of mm-hmm. the witches. Because we've had some very bad experiences if you have um, read (laughs) Throne of Glass with the witches, right? And so I was very suspicious because we've only heard like little bits about her and like all of this is going down and she's just like nowhere. Yeah. And so I was very suspicious of the queen. And so then when I figured out that they were the same, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, no. Mm. Bitch is going to get shit done. Um, (laughs) Yeah, she is. So I loved that. Uh huh. And back to Micah. So after this Cristalis attacks her, after he puts it together, he just magically appears at the gallery. And Lee Haba is just like, oh fuck. Because they're down in the basement where the secret library is with all the important tomes that Jessica keeps. And he is already inside the gallery, making his way down the steps very sinisterly. And so Bryce is having an oh fuck moment. Like now she's put it together that it was him all along. And so she does some really shrewd, very alien type things, which is, okay, I'm going to fucking like video stream this to the fucking summit so that everyone can bear witness to what's about to happen if I fucking get murdered right now. And she is like stalling, trying to pass time. She's motioning to like Lehaba to try and get hurt get her and Cy rinks out of there and shit just hits the fan. She calls Jessica too or messages her. Yes. 
So everyone at the summit is just like watching on this big screen. It's like I kept picturing like a massive movie theater and everyone is just watching like the last moments of Bryce's life as Micah is there. And Sabine, or is it Sabine? No, Sandriel's like trying to play it off and all this stuff. Like, oh, he's just doing whatever it is he does. We know that it's going to take 30 minutes for the fastest person to get there by chopper. Um, Oh, Fury's at the summit too. Forgot to mention Mm -hmm. that part because- Fury is like a top assassin in this world. And so Bryce is doing all these things. Well, then fucking Micah never go for the damn pet. Okay. He throws the poor baby chimera in the knock aquarium tank thing. And this creature gives me the heebie jeebies. (laughs) So did you get very strong? Like, um, what's the Keanu Reeves movie? Where the dog dies in the video? Oh, John Wick. Yeah. First John Wick. Yeah. John Wick. Very strong John Wick vibes from Bryce after this moment. But, okay, so I want to go back to, like, there was a moment where Fury, like, looked at Micah after the punishment, and if she, she was like, if you mess with her again, I will come after you to Micah. And I was like, ooh, damn, Fury. Like, are you that powerful? Like, are you able to kill an archangel? Archangel? Wow. Archangel. I said that right. I was like, did I say it? Um, and get away with it. And she said it like she was. So I love I the know. roller coaster of emotions that Tara goes through with like Fury and Bryce's friends because, like, at first like, they're like, oh, it's this girl crew. And then, like, Fury is just like, like dead, to, dead Bryce. to me. Yeah. Like, you're nowhere to be found. And she obviously needs you. She's mourning and grieving. And then, like, Fury's back and forth. But we learn that Fury is like, together together with juniper like they're romantically involved and bryce had no idea which is just another hit blow to bryce right because she's just like how can i be friends with you guys for this many years and you've been keeping this from me like come on like come on and the way that like fury tells her is like um (laughs) it was kind of funny in the book because like bryce is lighting into her about like you left me like and Fury's like, yeah, I left everybody. And she's like, you didn't, Juniper. And like, Fury's like, well, I have a different relationship with Juniper. And Bryce is like, no, you don't. We were all friends. And like, Fury's like, no, I really have a different kind of relationship with Juniper. And I'm just like, oh, oh, okay. Like, mm-hmm. she didn't come out and just say, like, we are, we are together, together. She's like, we have a different relationship than like we do. Yeah, it made me wonder if Juniper has been trying to find the perfect time to let Bryce know. And so mm-hmm. Fury was trying to find that balance between, you know, keeping it a secret for the sake of Juniper, but also not like lying to Bryce. <laughs> well, and like Juniper, you see this whole time that Juniper has been there trying to get Bryce back to herself. And so I think, like, having another secret come out, I think Juniper was afraid that that would just send her over the edge. And she's already had to stop her from jumping off a building once. So she didn't want to have to do that again. So I thought that that was funny when Fury told her, like, what it is. But anyway, back to the (laughs) Chimera, little, little Syrinx in, like, this pit with this monster thing that is, like Sandra said, just creepy. And... He, he's like the knock just let him like float down to the bottom because he was like using him as bait basically mm-hmm. he's like i'm like i don't want to kill that thing it's gonna die anyway but like i know bryce because i've been watching her is gonna jump in here to save him and then i have what i want mm-hmm. like a bigger prize but if i eat him she's not gonna jump in here so like i need to leave him alone so that she'll jump in here isn't the way the knock described kind of reminiscent of the Kelpie that gets Nesta yes. in its clutches but, in the bog a little bit? But it's worse because, like, they had a Kelpie in that tank before the knock. And <laughs> yeah. Bryce even mentions, like, I hated the Kelpie, <laughs> but I hate this thing more. Yeah. So, like, it's a step up from even that, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, Micah is tormenting her. Yeah. Lehaba. 
uses her wits to find a spell book and essentially locks Micah in the bathroom for as long as possible while Bryce dives into this fucking tank. I'm like trying to picture how big this tank is to fetch Cyrinx's poor little body. And then she's trying to resuscitate Cyrinx, right? And then like shit starts getting very real when Lehaba is like, Micah is about to burst through the door. And then there, Lehab is like, we don't have any time. We have to get up the stairs. Like, you have seconds. You literally have seconds. Like, pick up Cyrinx. Go now. Everyone's watching this play out on the screen. And Bryce knows, like, turns around, and Lehaba is just, like, saying her goodbyes, essentially. And, like, from this point on, this was, like, chapter 79 or something, but it's from this until the end of the book, Tara, I was emotionally <laughs> destroyed because... Why Lehaba? She is like comic relief. She is so adorable. She's just such a good friend. I'm just, ah. So so basically what she does is she uses her like little bit of power that she has. And she breaks the um, like glass, the water thing, and lets it come out in waves to stop Micah from going up the stairs and to give just a few seconds to Bryce to go get the God Slayer gun and get it together so that she can shoot Micah, which she does. Like he ends up dead. And then she just vacuums him up. Like, know, wasn't that, up wasn't that funny? Up. I was like, yes. I was like, yes. Like I needed that after like poor little Lahaba. Um, so she is saying like, I am the, like the descendant of like the queen and I will like, my friends are here with me, and I will, like, save them, basically. And, like, she just keeps repeating that as she's, like, sending her power and, like, punching and, like, trying to get this glass tank to break. And, like, right before it, like, this is the part that got me. Like, it's not that she died, but the part right before it where Bryce is like, but you're free. I paid for you. Like, you are free. You can go. Go. Get out of here. Go. And, like, she goes, I know. I look through your drawer. Like, this is my choice. I know it is. I look through your drawer. And, like, I don't know. That part got me because, like. It was such a Lehaba thing Bryce to do. loved her so <clears throat> much that she would put herself. And, again, Bryce keeps putting herself out to save the people she loves. Like, she would have sold herself or, like, did sell herself to just. Jessica to save Hunt. She did sell herself to save the Chimera. She did give up her eternal rights to like the like bone quarter. The under king. To allow mm -hmm. Danica to go there. Right. And so she keeps selling like these little pieces of herself to save her friends. And like Lily has told her like, you did this for him. Why haven't you done this for me? And like, Bryce is trying the whole time. And so when she notices her drawer, she knows that Bryce did in fact do it. And like, she felt that love and Bryce is like, you're free. Like you don't have to do this. Like you don't have to save the books. You don't have to save like me go. It's so telling for both of the characters. Right. But it's also telling for Bryce because she honestly thought that Lee Haba was just in her life out of obligation, like an enslavement, mm -hmm. like their relation was Jessica. And that once that bond was severed, she would go her merry way and have her own life. But that just simply wasn't the case because that isn't who Lee Lee is. It's just, yeah, when, when Bryce was just like, I was planning on throwing you a surprise party to celebrate and da da da. And then, I mean, Lee Haba is a little fire sprite. The first time she gets dunked in water, like her life force is snuffed out like she is gone yeah. it was just i was so sad but um yes i was with you the vacuuming up micah's ashes was like some much needed comic relief i also loved when she was like she she killed micah with the god slayer gun but then she went a step further and like mutilated the fuck out of his body because she's like this one's for hunt and mm -hmm. like chopped his head in half and then chopped it off. She's like, this one's for Lily. And like, it just like mutilated the fuck out of him. She, and like, everybody's watching her like go to town with Danica's knife. 
And she's like, this one's for the pack. And this one's for Danica. And and they're just like watching her like get her cathartic like release out of this. And they know that he has given her the synth that is in fact going to kill her according to what they think, right? Mm-hmm. And so they're like, oh yeah, she's just on her rampage because of the synth. <laughs> and then, like they find out from the, the the witch that no, actually she drank the antidote. Like she should be like good. And this is just her like, like murdering the fuck out of this dude and taking her revenge on him. Um, and, and then she just vacuums him up all peaceful and calm and like nothing happened. Like, mm-hmm. like, you couldn't just leave the ashes there? No, like, you had to, like, make sure this is clean. I feel like that'd be a Sandra moment. Like, like I can't just, like, leave the dirt on the floor. Yes, uh, that like is the totally a me him up would be me. The chopping like, him up would be me. The, like, cleaning it vacuum. up would be me. Yeah. Um, And then she escapes. And she is wondering why, like, nobody has come to, like, get her. Because when an archangel dies like time stops. And so it's very obvious to the entire world <laughs> that he has died, right? And also it's been streaming live for everybody in like Saturday Night Live, like Summit. And so she's like, why has nobody come for me? Like, this is weird. Like I just spent like five minutes vacuuming up his ashes. Like mm-hmm. they should be here by now. And then she steps out and she realizes that in fact it did work. And all of the gates are open for all of the little demons to get through. And so she goes, being Bryce, and she tries to start saving people. And she calls Juniper and she's like, Juniper, are you okay? And Juniper's like, yes, I'm okay. They're closing the doors. I'm trying to like get them to stall so that people can get in here. But it's a bunch of rich fucks who don't care. And so she's like, stall them as long as you can, but like, make sure you're safe. Yeah. And Bryce gets going through like the town is killing everything on her way. And she's trying to make it to the meadows where the humans are and trying to save them. The undefended. Like, uh, again, Bryce just having a bleeding heart for those who can't help themselves and have the least the, the smallest shot at surviving. That whole scene with Bryce running for all of the gates to try and do something about all of these demons from the different circles of hell coming out and just killing innocent people. Meanwhile, there's like shelters, you know, locking down. And so she's trying to get innocent people into these shelters before night falls because it's quickly approaching dark out. And all of this while Micah injected Bryce with the synth Mm -hmm. to, to initiate the using the, horn on her back to open these gates Mm -hmm. so he did succeed in doing that and so bryce is functioning off of all of this adrenaline she does have access to her powers now that the venom is out of her thigh but also with this synth being in her system and this whole scene i was i was crying on and off because everyone is sitting at the summit watching bryce do it alone and then you have the prime of the shifters come out and say that's a wolf and everyone's like what the fuck are you talking about she has danica's sword he's like no that is a true wolf that is what we used to be and so he always struck me as kind of like this grandfather figure for bryce very because dementia he, ridden right like he yeah out just like but a little bit. he still knows like who bryce is mm-hmm. deep down like her soul is good, right? And he sees that. Like, he's there enough to be able to see that. And so that was, like, a very touching moment. But everyone is literally, like, they cannot do anything. Fury can hop in her chopper, you know, and go over there. But it's going to take 30 minutes. But Bryce is on her own doing this, commando style. Well, and <laughs> Just- Sabine is like, no, I refuse. Like, we've got to protect our own. And, like, the Fae, like, the Autumn King is also like, no, I'm protecting my own. Like. I'm not going to send anybody out to help. I'm going to stay. So yeah, she's on her own and hunt and ruin. And like all of them are like, just let us go. Like we will go. Like we want to save her. Right. And like the witch is like, we've got to protect those that can't protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Like that's what we are here for. Um, She's, she's like, sends her witches to go get their little brooms as Sandra mentioned. And they've all been destroyed. Like, Every way out of the summit has been destroyed. And so they're kind of just on their own. And Fury mentions, hey, I have a helicopter. We can use that, right? And and like 
they're like what and she's like well it wasn't on site so it's probably still good so i just have to get it here and so like she's having her helicopter sent over and ruin is like i'm going i don't fucking care what you say and hunt is like i would like to go too and that is when we find out that the queen can in fact remove his crown and so she does and she just lays her little hand on him and is acting like nothing's happening nothing no big deal and she is removing his crown and ruin i think figures this out right and he starts talking to hunt through his head because that is a power of ruins that we did not know he can like that daimati power baby yeah 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 mind speaking Um, they call it something else in this um they call it like telepathy or something Mm -hmm. like not mind reading but like tele yeah anyway um so he is telling hunt like it'll be okay i don't i don't remember what he's telling him but he's like telling him something and then hunt gets up and he murders sandriel yes (laughs) finally this later um but he's like well her triari is not here or whatever it's called triari yeah um it's not here they didn't come back and that's like their first sign that like they aren't gonna help at all is they stayed away well they're not even on the same continent they're back in pangira right across the ocean right now i don't know if they're back yet because like they were there earlier the day they were they were visiting so i think they're on their way the hammer and whatever like she didn't bring one of them um the hind but then we also find out that um she has told everybody about what bryce is because right before that bryce tapped into her starborn powers to shut the gates right and i think that's after she no it was before she made the drop right no so rune Back at the summit, Rune realizes that everything unfolding for Bryce being by herself is her ordeal happening. It wasn't real Ruin, time. It was Declan. Or Declan was it Declan? Did. Declan yeah. was like, it, this is her ordeal. This is her, her ordeal, which is basically like her rite of passage, her challenge into becoming immortal or whatever that means for a fae like mm-hmm. her. And so she comes to this realization because there's an old saying over the gate, the heart gate, that the power belongs to... The, uh, the people or something like that. I forget. Yeah. Or whoever, whoever's with the people or something like that. And so, yeah, she taps into all of that power. And then she makes the drop and then everyone is losing their damn minds because she doesn't have an anchor because this was something that she had always planned with Danica, Danica for them to be each other's anchor so that they don't fall and die doing this. Never come up. And so she is falling and it's very much like this very, intangible kind of place it's almost like a different realm or between places right and she's just plummeting 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 she surpasses rune's power she surpasses even the autumn king doesn't she mm-hmm. or she comes like very yeah. close but like so much power gets to the bottom and who do we see danica 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 used her one little bit of like herself left which was mentioned to Sabine by the under king that she had a little bit of herself left over on the other side. And she uses that to get in contact and to like help Bryce. But I thought, okay, so did she not use her starborn? Like, did she not say I am the starborn and close the gates before she made the drop? She closed only that one gate, but the that rest one, were still right? open. Mm-hmm. Okay, but but everybody knew that she was the starborn, like knew that she had that power, which then Ruin was like, what the fuck? She blinds the demons with her starlight mm-hmm. power. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's where I was confused because I'm like, I'm pretty sure she like told everybody because yeah. then Sandriel told the um, Asteri and that's why Hunt killed her. Because yes. he's like, you're telling them to basically come kill Bryce. Yeah, because being starborn of that amount of power is a direct threat to the Asteri and everything that they mm-hmm. stand for in this little political system that they have created. She's as powerful as them because they are powerful because they, they're they basically a star incarnate, right? And the starborn has the light of the star, but now we're finding out that she is, in fact, super powerful, too, which is up there on the level of the Astari. 
What do you think is going on with Bryce having this much just raw starlight power? Okay, so it's mentioned in the epilogue that there were two starborns, right? Mm -hmm. And one was a girl and one was a boy. Thea. Thea Mm -hmm. and I forgot like the prince's name. Was it Apollo? No, it wasn't Apollo. Polyus or something like that? Apollyon. So our little friendly prince of the chasm, which I told Sandra that I really do like him. Like, I don't know why I'm I'm liking Uh him. So he has a conversation with Jezeba in the epilogue about that she has Thea's power, which they thought was gone. Like everybody has thought that that power like ceased to exist. And he knows it's her power because he's like, I will never forget that. And so I'm like, was he in love with her? Or did she do something very bad? It sounded like love. But then I'm like, is she the one who like put him in hell basically? Or what? Or or was he in love with her? So we we see that. And then we also have the fact that the seventh Astari is dead, right? Like a long time ago. So I have multiple theories about this. (laughs) Was that one Thea? And her power. And so now that like Bryce has her power, they are concerned that she's going to step up to that seventh role and take over because it sounds like that seventh role has been left the way it was because they were super powerful. Right. Or another person that has died that we don't have a whole lot of information on that is also mentioned because they also mentioned something about Hunt's dad and how he would be proud of his son. And, like, the little prince of the chasm is, like, I think, like, Jessica asks him what what he thinks that Hunt's dad would think. And he's, like, I think he'd be proud, but you knew him better than me. What do you think? And she doesn't answer that, right? Like, mm-hmm. she just kind of leaves that hanging. And so I'm thinking Hunt's dad is one of the princes of hell that, mm-hmm. or the under the under king. Because both of those, Jessica might know fairly well, right? She, like, she seems like she's on the, like, dark side of things and, like, down with the dark side of things. So I think maybe it's one of those two. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe his mom was the seventh because we don't know too much about her. No, we just know that she died and she got sick and died and no one helped. Right? After his dad left, we don't know anything else about her besides that she died. There are a couple weird descriptors about Hunt. And so I, I think it was like hypaxia maybe, or maybe it was someone else too, acting, v- treating him very differently because they referred to this around his forehead as like a, a dark crown, a right? Halo. Yeah, it's it's a halo, like a thorn halo, but they refer to it as a dark crown. And they also keep bringing attention to his wings being like a very unique shade of gray Uh um unlike the rest of the angels that we have seen which are white or like dark yes like he's a mixture of good and evil and he has lightning which i mean like vast vast lightning power that no one has like seen the extent of yet because he's been enslaved she takes out on sandriel yeah he does take it out on her (laughs) a little bit Mm mm-hmm we didn't talk about the scene with Adis uh, whenever Bryce summoned Adis him? to the living room without telling Hunt, and Hunt got so pissed off at Hunt's her like, because you just summoned a prince of hell into your fucking living room. The temperature plummeted. And she's like, I knew he wouldn't hurt me. Yeah, which that's how she tells him the story of meeting Adis when she was 13 years old. And I think he was in a cat form then, right? Uh-huh. And licking himself. And he was in a cat form when he was talking to Jessica. And she's like, you know, you're not really a cat. You don't have to lick yourself. And he's like, maybe I, I like it. <laughs> what if I like it? <laughs> uh, I'm just like, I, I love him. Like, I know that Sarah Jane is going to rip out my heart. The second I say I love a character, he's going to like turn like the superest evil. But I like him. I like him a lot. There's so much mystery about Adis and Hunt's origins and Bryce's, you know, heritage and even Jezebud. What do you think Jezebud Roga's story is? 
I think I asked this last time, but like, there's just so much mystery about her. Yes. And like, she, she tells Adis that she moved the entire private library of books, like to a different safe place. Very right. Very quickly. It's like she snapped her fingers and just like disappeared the books somewhere safe. So she's very invested in saving, you know, these kinds of records. And, and all, he, he asks her. Like if she did, and he's like, I'm not going to ask you where, but he was like, we need those safe, basically. And this library was the ancient human library, right? Yes. Uh A lost, a lost library. Of like all their books that was supposed to be like. Destroyed. Out. It's like the library of Alexandria Mm -hmm. Uh type of thing. So back to Bryce and her like drop. So she sees Danica and she's like, I don't want to go back. Like, I miss you too much. I don't want to go back. And Danica's like, you have to go back, basically. Like, I won't be able to stay here. Like, I'm going to disappear after this. And so I need you to go back and just know that I'm always in your heart. Right? Like, I'm always there. And so Danica, like, basically tells her and helps her, like, ascend. Right? And they're waiting, like, they have six minutes until their human body kind of dies from, like, no oxygen. And so, like, everybody at the summit is waiting for her to come back to life. Like, Declan is watching this, and he's, like, got this little countdown and whatever. And at that time, Fury and everybody gets on the helicopter, and they're leaving, and they're, like, watching this countdown. And um, they see tanks roll in with, like, these bombs that are created by the Asteri, and they start shooting them because of fucking Sandriel. And, um, like, basically they're trying to kill Bryce. The brimstone missiles. Yeah. And so Bryce is trying to make it out. And you got these brimstone missiles shooting at the city, not caring. And then you also got, um, like, everybody watching. And the Autumn King is like, she doesn't have an anchor. There's no way she's going to survive. Like, no way she's going to make it back up. And, like, he's just given up on her. And everybody else is basically given up because they're like, there's no way. And Hunt's over here like, well, we're going to do what we can. And so they all leave. They're watching it. And then she starts her ascent. And the the Autumn King is still like, no, not going to make it. Like, there's no way. Like, she doesn't have an anchor. It doesn't happen. And she's making it up and whatever. And so she does make it out. And she does close all of the gates. And, like, these bombs are hitting, and she is being destroyed. Like, she's using all of her power to close these gates, right? And the bombs are hitting, and, like, she heals everything with her first light from that drop, right? She closes the gates, and she heals everything with that first drop or that first light. Yes, because Hunt had died as well because they came crashing down, right? Like they were the helicopter. Like, well, or... Hunt came out of no. Hunt came out of the helicopter. Like his yeah. wings are still a little bit like he not strong fly, enough. But mm-hmm. he like basically like parachuted down to get to her, and he's like doing compressions to keep her alive. And then she comes like she comes back, and he stops these compressions. And he's also using his lightning as like basically like the paddles like clear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and she comes back to life, and she's still like very weak, right? And he protects her with his body when one of the, like, bombs hits. And, um, or no, like, he protects her before she comes back to life. And she wakes up right after that, and his wings are, like, destroyed and all of that. But he gets healed, right? Well, when she comes back to life, he's alive, and he's like, don't you ever do that to me again. Because before she made the drop... She whispered three words. Oh, she whispered, I love you. When he he got completely mangled by the m- missiles and was like missing up, like his legs were mangled. Like he was like shredded up, like dead. And she whispered into his ear. And so it was like the power of love and her starlight power. Like, like it brought him back and like closed all of the gates and stuff and started repairing the city. But It was one of those moments where she had to do this on her own and she succeeded, but there were still other people along the way that were trying to help her. Like Ethan showed up Mm -hmm. and she like tricked him and like shoved him into the shelter and which locked him in. And he was like pounding on the door trying to get out and help her. But yeah, she had Danica. Yeah, because I think the bomb hit before she made the drop. 
And so when she made the drop, it healed him. Yeah. And he, like, she had, before she made the drop, she had whispered, I love you. And then after, he's like, you're such a coward to do that. When I was out, he's like, but I hurt you. So, Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to make sure you stay alive. And so then she woke up and she's like, did you just call me a coward? Yeah. He's like, yeah. Their their relationship, even with him meeting, like, the parents on the video call, like, beforehand, when they're, like, trying to clean up the apartment, she's like, my mom can tell when I haven't cleaned the apartment. And she can tell the difference between magic cleaned and hand cleaned. (laughs) And then she even says something about it. She's like, when was the last time you cleaned? She's like, 20 minutes ago. Yeah. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> um, and then, like, so after, like, she made the drop. She's okay. They go and, like, go back to the apartment and meet, like, the little chimera, right? And she gets a call from the Asteri, Regulus or whatever his name is. And basically, he's like, hey, kind of a peace offering. Like, I'm going to give you, like, I'm going to do you a favor, but I need you to promise to, like, basically never come against us. Yeah, make a promise. And to, like, not tell the secrets of what happened here. You know, like, not tell about, like, what happened to Sandriel, not tell what happened to Micah, not tell what you are, all of these things. And... Right before that, Hunt had, like, they had been getting frisky and her mom called. And she's like, you can't call me. Like, you do all these things. And, like, I'm scared. And, like, and so, like, Hunt is, like, off in the shower and, like, just thinking. He's like, you know, we're about to start something. But, like, I'm probably dead. And getting very down on it. And so then she gets this other call, which is from Regulus. Or, and he's like, I'm going to do you this favor. And basically the favor is he freed. Hunt and Hunt's tattoo changed from the S P Q M to a C of the freed person. And like he came back in and he's like, huh? Huh? Like what's going on? C precipitas. Like, oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so she's like, okay, like I'll I promise to not come against you, basically. Mm-hmm. And then we end with our epilogue of Jessica and the little prince of the chasm cat having this conversation about Hunt's dad. And I think Jespa also asked him why he never told her about Bryce. Mm -hmm. Because she didn't know the full extent of Bryce. She just knew that Bryce was basically in her like protection from this Prince of the Chasm. Like he basically put her into Jespa's like orbit. And she's like, why didn't you tell me? With this book, spanning two years right with a lot of flashbacks from when Bryce was 13 and and even a little bit older when her and when Danica found out about Bryce's power from the little gun battle that went down whenever Danica decided to go rescue some animal traffickers or animals from the traffickers now that this whole plot line is tied up with Danica's murder and the synth and you know Hunt's freedom and Lihaba any uh, anything you want to see in the next book? I want to see the connection between like we have a little bit of the connection between the prince of the chasm, but like I think it's much more than he witnessed her right after her oracle. Like I think he was there for a reason, and I think it's very much more. And I don't know if it's tied to Hunt or if it's tied to her per se. Like I think he's been pulling some strings, right? He's like our Aelin. Like he's been pulling the strings and been like steps ahead of everybody else and so I think he is going to play a big role and I want to see like why and like I said I think he's been the one putting into place like Jessica in her life and like the oracle and helping her figure out what that was and all of that stuff so I want to figure out who who's who's Hunt's daddy which Sandra already told me is not in the second book (laughs) <laughs> okay, I okay. okay. listeners tara always she'll send a text message to me asking a very pointed spoilery question okay and so what am i supposed to do just not answer and so i said hopefully we'll figure that out like we can talk theories after the next book so tara goes oh gee thanks so we're not gonna find out even in the next book huh I'm smart, guys. I can read between the lines. I I mentioned this in the last episode when we talked about House of Earth and House of Earth and Blood Part One. But when we finish House of Sky and Breath, 
in a couple of weeks and talk about it, you, we will be at the same exact place in, you know, Sarah J. Mass's little story here. And we will get to talk all of the theories and all of the things because I am, I am so excited and it's getting to a point where I cannot like not tell you spoilers, even spoilers. Yes. My algorithm on my TikTok has picked up on the fact <laughs> that I am reading these books. And so I have to be very, very careful not to get spoilers from that. And I did pick up on like a somewhat spoiler, not too bad. But like everybody's reaction to about halfway through the next book has been very, I don't want to say opinionated, but very strong. They've had very strong reactions to about halfway through the second book. So I'm also very interested to see what happens about halfway through the second book. Because like if everybody's having the same reaction, it's kind of like chapter five of this book. There were very strong reactions to chapter five of this book and shit went down, right? Like (laughs) shit went down that affected the entire rest of the book. And I have a feeling that that is what happens in whatever chapter it is about halfway through the book of the next one. So I'm very interested to see what that is. Like, I don't like not knowing things. Oh, I know. Like, it, I'm not a it very kills you. person. I know. You like to investigate and do research and figure out all the things so that you can have fun and talk about it too. But next week, listeners, we will talk about the first half of House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. I can't remember off the top of my head what chapters that is, but if you check out, you know, our social media handle, at Story Darlings, you can see what chapter breakdown is like right there. So we will cover the first half then. And hopefully we will be able to cover whatever it is that I was just talking about. Yes, we will. And we're going to have so much fun because now that we have finished Throne of Glass, Akatar, and then Crescent City very soon with the third book, uh, which we will break into two parts and also discuss here on the show, we will dig into all of the things and hopefully have a fun time about it so you're almost caught up with me tara woohoo i know <laughs> my bestie reading these books that i love and with all of my heart they have been very good i just like the friendship i've enjoyed it i, I mm-hmm. think i might enjoy this one the best if i had to like rank so far this one is one throne of glass is two and akatar is three Mm-hmm. And I I think that that might be a hot take because I think a lot of people like Akatar better. And oh yeah, I think my favorite parts of Akatar are the ones about Nesta. And again, through my <laughs> algorithms on my um, TikTok, I am finding out that most people hate those books. Yes, and those are my favorite in the series of Akatar. So no, even like, after the Nesta book, there's still a lot of people out there who just do not like her and i i love nesta i didn't at first just because i wanted to know more about why Mm -hmm. she is the way that she is and then we got that i love it because it broke perspective all we've ever seen is reason and favorite's perspective of course they're going to be treated as and painted as little darlings in your head and it's not until you get nesta's perspective and they're not so squeaky clean and perfect where we get to see the raw like the realness of it right so I, I feel like I'm going to side with you, Tara. I feel like I love Crescent City most. And I think it is because of just how complex the relationships are and just some of the struggles that they have. Because they're more there they're is more, with it. Yes, everybody. they there's so much grieving and depression and like working on the self in it. But that's also like Throne of Glass, I would say. I like second best as well because of all the fellowship and friendship and like Aelin was such a strong character. Like she can be abrasive to a lot of people, like to a lot of people, they're Mm -hmm. not her favorite heroine in SJM books, Mm -mm. but she was just so confident and powerful and she knew what she was about. And if you didn't like it, get the fuck out of her way type of thing. Yeah. Well, and I think that one's one of my favorite because there's so much like, not world building, but kind of world building, but also so many like Easter eggs, mm-hmm. like so many spider webs of like getting to the end. Whereas with Akatar, there are some like there's some very big ones, but I feel like it's more like a romance. 
it's like a romance bubble, right? Because they're just yeah. like these little fae creatures. You don't have the witches. You don't have the shifters. I love romance. Don't get me wrong. I just think that there's maybe more to like Throne of Glass. Like I, I like both series, but I think that there's just more to Throne of Glass. It's not just love. It's not just like a thriller. It's not just a action. It's like combination. Mm-hmm. And Akatar is very like it is actiony and it is all of those things, but like its core is a love story. Yes. And honestly, the last book of Akatar, A Court of Silver Flames, that's the first time that we get like the horrible trauma and the actual working on it and developing, you know, the Valkyrie friends. Like that's what speaks to me most because it's so relatable mm-hmm. to Throne of Glass and Crescent City in a way, right? So I'm with you. I would say Crescent City, Throne of Glass, Akatar. Same. But I mean, I adore each for very different reasons. They're different kinds of series, but yeah. Yeah. Totally. That's why we're and besties. I can't wait for <laughs> like the potential that I'm hearing of these being a crossover in some way. I mean, we've already had a crossover. Kingdom of Ash, chapter 99, and A Court of yeah, Silver but Flames, I'm, chapter I'm thinking we're gonna see 40. more. I'm thinking there's gonna be a bigger crossover than just Aelin falling through the sky. Would you stay off the damn TikTok? <laughs> Even from the TikTok. Okay, okay. It's like we've already had a little bit, but like, why? Like, Sarah J. Mass doesn't throw things in for no reason. This and is true. Like, why throw this in if there's not more to it? And why throw in all of the information about like this isn't the only world if there's not more to that? Like, that has been mentioned in this book, like, I don't know how many times, but over 10 that this is not the only world. There are others. We came from a different world. Like the Fae came from a different world. Like why throw that shit in if it's not important? The many faced goddess. Mm-hmm. 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 Like I, so that's not even from my TikTok. That's just from me picking up and reading between some lines here. I can't wait to discuss part two of the next book. Well, we, we're coming up on time now. We hope that you have enjoyed Tara and I just going on and on blabbering about House of Earth and Blood <laughs> for the last two weeks. And we will dive into the first half of Sky and Breath next week. So if this is your first time tuning in, we hope you like and subscribe. And if you're a returning listener and you haven't rated and reviewed the show yet, please do. Um, that is the best way to show your support for the show. And it means so much to have you with us. And we will see you next week. You can also leave comments if there is a series that you want us to start after we finish with the Sarah J. Mass um, universes. Yeah. So feel free to like say your favorite. Yes. Um, that, that reminds me. So we we did start an Amazon book club. There are almost there might be 40 of you in that club now, besides Tara and I. So thank you to everyone who's joined that book club. You can make book recommendations on that. And then we take a vote on that and across social media for what our little book club read will be after um, we're done with the SJM book. So um, I'll link that out in the show notes. Definitely join that if you want to be a part of our Story Darlings book club. So thank you. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.